This is the island of Uto in Sweden. To many, this island may seem just like any other island. It's filled with a lot of normal plant life, a few docks for people to visit, and even a few tourists pop up here or there. There should be nothing special about this island. But as it turns out, this island may be responsible for a lot of our modern world and the future global superpowers in the coming decades. Jose Bonifacia Andrada was a geology professor at the University of Coimbra in the year 1800. But in his spare time, he traveled around Europe studying rocks. And one day on his travels, he stumbled upon an island with a small iron mine that was operating nearby. So he ventured into the mine and found a very strange mineral. It was somewhat clear with a yellow and whitish tint. It was also fairly brittle and it didn't really seem to have any special properties. So that rock, which he called petalite, got put away in a Swedish laboratory where it was not touched for another 17 years. That was until Swedish chemist John Jacob Berzelius and his student Johan August Arfwedsen decided to analyze the mineral. And what they found was an element that the world had never seen before. It was an element that behaved very similar to potassium and sodium. However, this element was much less soluble in water, and it seemed to be more solid than them as well. And so they named this new element after the Greek word lithos, meaning stone. And we now know that element today as lithium. So when there is a new discovery in a field like chemistry or physics, it usually takes many years before we find a practical application for it. And if you have studied history at all, you probably know that there is one thing that drives technological innovation more than any other factor. The thing that drives science and technology forward faster than any other thing is not education, it's not freedom, it's not the economy, it's not a government policy, it's not even a scientific research fund. Well, if it aren't those things, then what is it? Well, if you want to innovate at a faster pace than any time in human history, then go to war. You see, up until the 1940s, lithium didn't really have a purpose. There were a few lithium mines that were active in the world, but lithium was only used for basic things like ceramic bowls and for the treatment of mania in a few small areas in Europe. But when World War II came along, lithium started being mass produced because it was a vital part of greasing the engines of fighters and bombers. But it wasn't until after World War II ended and a new colder war began that lithium would begin to become a massive part of humankind's history. That's because this little element would play a vital role in developing humanity's most infamous invention. As it turns out, when you apply quite a lot of heat and bombard lithium with subatomic particles called neutrons, you get this. A thermonuclear weapon. The most destructive thing that humanity has ever created was spawned because of that little rock that was discovered in Uto, Sweden just 150 years beforehand. And what soon followed was a nuclear arms race between the Soviet Union and the United States. Over the course of the next three decades, the demand for thermonuclear bombs skyrocketed and so did the demand for lithium. The Soviet Union and the United States would go on to create over 70,000 nuclear weapons during the Cold War and detonate 1,747 of them to see their effects on our planet Earth. And because of this nuclear armament, lithium began being mined all around the world. The United States became the largest producer of lithium up until the 1990s when the United States began to disarm its nuclear arsenal. And so, the 2000s came along and the demand for lithium completely dried up. The industry was completely dead. But then, this happened. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. These are not three separate devices. 
This is one device, and we are calling it iPhone. In 2007, the iPhone was released. You see, as it turns out, lithium was a very special element because it was extremely good at one thing, making very light, rechargeable batteries. Sony released the first rechargeable lithium-ion battery in the early 1990s, but it wasn't until the mass adoption of the smartphone and laptops that lithium became popular again. And to put this into perspective, lithium usage globally has increased by 600% since 2007. And this is almost entirely thanks to lithium batteries inclusion into smartphones and computers. But that's not the full story because two other industries have been growing alongside the age of smartphones that also rely on lithium in order to succeed. And those industries are the electric car industry and the energy industry. Electric cars need lithium batteries to run. And as we all know, the electric car industry has gone from non-existent just 15 years ago to now having about three to 5% ownership of all cars on the road in the world. The renewable energy industry has also experienced a similar boom of having a rapid exponential growth over the last 15 years, and that industry relies heavily upon storing the electricity from windmills, solar farms, and so on in lithium ion batteries. But all of this insane growth of our modern smartphones, computers, cars, and energy sector has come at a cost. You see, over the past two years, the price of lithium has increased by over 400%, and this is thanks to the inability of the supply to keep up with the demand. The world's lithium industry was not ready to keep up with such an increase in demand, and so in 2022, we began for the first time to see lithium shortages around the world. This led to a lot of things, like increased prices for electric cars, the inability for smaller companies to obtain lithium, and this also made renewable energy more expensive. And so that is why several nations around the world have begun focusing in on trying to become the largest producer and new king of the lithium industry. I mean, let's think about this. Whoever controls the lithium will be able to control the current and next generation of our economy and our energy supply. And well, that brings us to today. Currently, the biggest producer of lithium in the world is Australia, as they produce about 45% of the world's lithium. This is thanks in part to private industry and governmental focus on trying to grab a hold of the industry many years before any other nation made any attempt. That means that as of right now, there's a good chance that Australia could become the controller and superpower of the lithium industry for years to come. China, on the other hand, controls about half of the world's lithium processing and production plants in the world. However, they mine substantially less lithium than Australia. But across the Pacific Ocean exists something that might change the entire industry. This is the Atacama Desert in South America. Let's take a look at the ground here. Huh. Bone dry. Well, as it turns out, this is actually the driest place on the planet. In fact, the Sahara Desert, known for getting almost no rainfall, gets seven times more rain than the Atacama Desert. But it is here, in a place with no water or life at all, that may soon become the center of the world's technology. That's because the Atacama Desert may hold up to half of the world's lithium in its bone-dry crust and also in an easily extractable form as well making it very likely that this desert may turn into the largest lithium extraction field in the world. In fact, many have deemed this desert the Lithium Triangle as an area shared between Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile have the highest density of lithium on the planet. And because of this, many other countries and companies have already taken notice. The American company Abermerl has already bought up much of the lithium production in Australia and Chile and plans to expand its operation in the lithium triangle. The South Korean company POSCO is building an $830 million lithium plant in the Atacama Desert, and there are more than a dozen other massive lithium extraction projects currently being bid on and constructed within the lithium triangle. And this rush of companies flooding into the lithium triangle has led to it being called a white gold rush of the 21st century. But again, 
that's not the full story. Because as was the case with the gold rush, the United States West Coast may soon be home to the next generation of mineral prospectors. This is a postcard from the 1950s of the Salton Sea in Southern California. This area was known as a resort town filled with tons of tourists, families, and travelers. And well, this is the Salton Sea today. Over the last 70 years, this once rich seabed has dried up pretty substantially since, well, the postcard was made. And as it turns out, during all that time, underneath all of that water existed an abundance of dried up lithium. Currently, there is only one lithium mine operating in the entire United States. But over the last two years, companies like General Motors, Berkshire Hathaway, and about a dozen others have already bought up the rights to lithium reserves in Nevada and California in hopes of creating their own lithium extraction fields. So where is this all going? And how will all of this affect you and the economy going forward? Well, the first thing worth noting is that lithium and a handful of other elements are following a similar trajectory to that of oil in the 19th and 20th centuries, meaning that we will likely see an increasing demand for it in the coming decades. The second thing is that lithium might soon be the most important factor in our energy infrastructure going forward. With the cost of renewable energy going down and the price of oil going up, lithium ion batteries might soon be how we power humanity at scale. In fact, the Victorian Big Battery in Australia opened up just a few months ago and is already supplying over 50,000 homes with a consistent source of electricity, although it did have a minor setback with a fire at the facility. Another thing is that we are already beginning to see the geopolitical turmoil being caused by the hunt for battery technology, as countries like China have already begun buying up mines in Africa, which has come with its own controversy. And some American companies have also done the same as well. And well, because China right now is heavily reliant upon Australia's lithium production, there has already been a conflict over Australia and China gaining control and bidding on all the nearby lithium assets. And well, as we saw from China's ban on Australian coal just two years ago, a vital resource being cut off from a big country like China can have global economic effects at a large scale. But I do have a separate video about the Australian-China coal war on my channel already, so check that out if you wish. But at the end of the day, if countries like Australia, Chile, Bolivia, Argentina, and the United States keep investing heavily into their own lithium industries, they may soon be the energy and, well, battery suppliers of the world. But maybe not. Maybe lithium is not the battery of the future. There are other companies investing heavily into redox flow batteries and zinc batteries that could potentially outperform the lithium ion batteries going forward. And maybe the world will be scrambling to buy up zinc mines instead of lithium mines in 20 years. Who knows? There's also the problem of producing the electricity in the first place, as that is arguably more important than the battery. But you're going to have to stay tuned for that video. And subscribe and hit the notification bell to know when that video comes out. Also, more than 96% of you that watch my videos are not subscribers, so uh, yeah, please subscribe. But I just want to leave you with this one last fact about lithium. So let's think of all of this. The bombers, the fighters, the nuclear weapons, the smartphone revolution, the exponential growth in electric vehicles, the political and economic turmoil, and the complete shift in our energy infrastructure. is all thanks to finding a rock on a small island in Sweden over 220 years ago. Thanks for watching.